really glad that I could play uh, this particular uh, part because uh, the psyche of this woman, I mean, can you imagine that uh, she's married, her beloved brother actually marries her off so well and then uh, he turns around and after the Akashwani, he completely uh, puts them through torture, mental, physical, not physical though, mental. But at that uh, very uh, uh, point, her husband, who she has not had any life with other than the jail, and then she knows that he has promised the brother that he will give every child of hers. And that's the only way they're going to live. She knows the end, like after, even after being told by Vishnu himself, they are still scared for him because they are humans and the emotions are very much there because they are humans. So, in spite of that, uh, in spite of Lord Vishnu saying, she is still scared because she is a mother. Towards the end when the eighth son is born and he has to again be away from her just so that he can come back again and uh, do it. And the whole thing is divine also at the same time. But this character is very human. Because in spite of being, uh, uh, you know, everything uh, divine, somewhere she's still sad. And she, in the end, she's still waiting. She still wants to, uh, and she, for her, uh, she she's not uh, embracing God or anything. She's embracing a child. Right from the child to the grandmoms and granddads and everyone will see it together, I am sure because there is lot more than uh, just an animation film because there is, uh, there is a philosophy in this. <laughs>